Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, this weekend, some of the state's newest graduates received their diplomas with what may well be mixed feelings of both excitement and panic, because now it's time to get a job. We'll begin our show with a look at how the downturn in oil prices could affect recent graduates in the short term and the energy industry on down the road. If you've been grooming yourself for the oil and natural gas industry, and then all of a sudden there's no jobs for what you've been grooming yourself for, you're kind of stuck in a pickle because you could have been out there going to a power industry or going to a manufacturing engineering position. In our continuing look at the skills gap, we see how one group is meeting industry demands with qualified workers with skills training. Soft skills are, are really what makes a, a well-rounded person. You can't just have the physical skills. They need all those skills together to be really productive. We need them skilled because there is a gap in just people that know how to do things. We visit a classroom where students are getting a real bang for their buck, and we end our day with a little Cal Couture. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well overall, the United States generated more jobs last year than any time since 1999. Unemployment has fallen to 5.5% nationally, down more than a full percentage point from just two years ago. A rapidly improving picture for everyone except new graduates. That's because for young people in their 20s with a four-year degree, the national unemployment rate is more than twice that of the general population. A problem that here in energy country is being felt by one group of graduates that usually can name their own price. Joining me now with more is our Courtney May. Rob, here at Oklahoma State University, they often cannot graduate enough engineers for the jobs that are out there. But there's one group of recent graduates that may struggle in their search for work. With the prices of oil decreasing, the number of jobs available in the energy industry is as well, leaving some petroleum engineer graduates looking for jobs. Engineering student Jordan Morgan. With that, the oil drop that we've had, the uh, jobs for uh, upstream have kind of vanished a little bit. And normally that wouldn't be that big a deal because when one industry lowers, there's demand that increases in another industry. But the issue is, if you've been grooming yourself for the oil and natural gas industry and then all of a sudden there's no jobs for what you've been grooming yourself for, you're kind of stuck in a pickle because you could have been out there going to a power industry or going to a manufacturing engineering position. In 2014, oil prices in Oklahoma peaked at $101 per barrel. And now we are seeing the lowest oil prices since 2005, affecting Oklahoma's economy and causing industry layoffs of more than 3,000 jobs. From a petroleum engineering standpoint, the reduction in the, the, the price of oils has had a tremendous impact. The reality is, in our state, you can't produce oil at $40 a barrel, so the, uh, there's a cutback on, um, on all the drilling and exploration activity. And until the price of oil comes back up, uh, that activity is uh, going to be dormant. And with 20% of jobs in the state tied to the oil and gas industry, Oklahoma is one of three states facing the biggest impact with drilling stopped. Exploration and production companies aren't going to drill more wells because, you know, you're spending millions of dollars to drill a well and oils, uh, the price per barrel just drops so drastically. So they're just going to uh, stop drilling and let that price go back up a little bit to make it cost effective to drill. Meanwhile, many petroleum engineers who are left without a job attend graduate school or minor in another engineering field, broadening their skills and expanding their job opportunities. 
I mean, 10 years from now, what I know is things will be totally different than they are now. But we will have trained students that they will be able to move into these new areas uh, because they do understand how nature works, they understand basics, fundamentals, and they haven't been trained just for one industry. Uh, and, and that's critical for us as a society to have people that do have this broad-based training that can solve problems that we don't know what, are, what even is on the horizon, but we'll be prepared to do it. While recent graduates may need to widen their search beyond the energy industry. All right. So Courtney, this sounds to me, as they would say, like deja vu all over again. Because when I graduated in the 1980s during the last big oil bust, I had a handful of friends who graduated with petroleum engineering degrees that never ever worked in the industry. And that's the fear of most oil and gas companies. We've talked to several energy executives and they've said that a donut hole was created in their industry in the 1980s when many people were leaving the energy industry for other work. And now that the baby boomers are retiring, there's a need for experienced workers. So Court, I'm curious about the young man that you talked with. What's he going to be doing? Well, it's said that you make your own luck, and Jordan is graduating with a mechanical engineering major and then a minor in petroleum engineering. He also did an internship with Chesapeake Energy and worked at a rig over the summer. And from that experience and also his good grades, he was able to accept a job opportunity his junior year in college, and he will start that this summer. All right. Thank you so much, Courtney. You're welcome, Rob. Well, while the energy industry is still hiring in certain areas, it's also shedding some jobs at a dramatic rate. Earlier, I visited with Chad Wilkerson, the head of the Oklahoma City branch of the Federal Reserve Bank. Talk to me a little bit about the spring survey that was done by the Fed and what you found. Yeah, we do a survey of energy firms in our district, our seven state district, uh, heavily concentrated in Oklahoma because that's the, the biggest oil and gas state in our region. Uh, and we found from then that obviously oil and gas activity fell sharply in the first quarter. Um, we found out from them they plan to cut employment this year fairly significantly, on average about 12 percent across firms, and that varied by type of firm. Uh, oil field services firms plan to cut close to 20 percent of jobs this year. Uh, exploration production companies is more like 5 percent, uh, but both of those numbers are fairly uh, sizable cuts. Uh, but an encouraging thing that we found in that survey was that firms have indeed been uh, becoming a bit more efficient or at least a lower cost than they were. We asked them uh, what their current break-even price is, what price they need for oil. Uh, and as of uh, late March when we did that survey, the average across firms was $62 uh, with a range of 40 to 75. So it depended on which plays they were in, uh, how active they were in different areas. Uh, but that's down considerably from what they responded uh, last September, which was $79. So their cost or their, their break-even price has come down about 20% uh, just over the past six months. And the, the silver lining there is that that means oil prices may not need to rise back as much as we thought they might need to six months ago. Now, this break-even price, is that reflective of new technology? Is it reflective of maybe they've lowered their expenses with some of the layoffs that we've been seeing? Yeah, there's really three main reasons. The biggest reason would be they've lowered their costs, uh, primarily the, the cost that they're charged by uh, services companies for their services. Those have come down. And services companies have reduced uh, those costs in part uh, via uh, layoffs. So that has been part of the reduction. Uh, in the short run. Uh, but other factors have been enhanced use of technology. You know, when prices were extremely high, uh, firms didn't need to focus quite as much on becoming efficient. They always do, but it wasn't as high a priority as when oil prices are as low as they were earlier this year is one factor. And then another factor is that uh, many of the rigs that have been laid down so far have been on the more fringe areas of plays that have higher break-even prices in the first place. So the remaining rigs are more concentrated in the sweet spots and have lower break-even levels. Now next week, we will take a closer look at the impact a constricting energy industry could have on Oklahoma's larger economy. But first, a student contest that is far from child's play. 
You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, more than 2,000 students gathered in Tulsa for this year's Skills USA competition, competing in everything from technical and skills occupations to health field jobs. Now, the winners are now heading off to Louisville, Kentucky for their national contest. But ultimately, it may be Oklahoma's economy that benefits the most from all the skills that these participants now have helping fill the skills gap. Joining me now is our Andy Barth. Well, Rob, currently in Oklahoma, nearly half of the available jobs require career and technical training or an associate's degree, while nearly 23% require a high school diploma or less. However, when we look at the degrees Oklahomans actually have, those percentages are reversed. So a high school diploma, which is still not enough for most jobs, is still the only degree most Oklahomans have, widening an ever-growing skills gap, yet one that the Skills USA organization is working to bridge. From construction to cosmetology, the students at the Skills USA competition are preparing for their careers. It gives them the opportunity to develop some skills and also see how they kind of compare, how they come through the class, how they compare with others. Instructor Dennis Bushman is with Northwest Technology Center in Alva and says while the competition is helpful, his emphasis, students' futures. My focus is more getting prepared for the workforce and making them successful in the workforce. You know, the competition is just a icing on the cake, I guess. Student Lee Don is preparing for a career in computer networking, a career that's right up his alley. Well, I really like technology in the first place. I'm a nerd, and it's kind of easy. Computers are like my, my forte. A forte that sets him up for a diverse set of skills. We study all things ranging from repairing computers from hardware to software to connecting them to the internet, designing and implementing networks. And for fellow competitor Logan Cross, his career aspirations are big. I plan on doing cybersecurity with working, plan on going into the cybersecurity field, working with some type of governments. A goal being made possible by Mid Dell Technology Center. They've done a lot. The teachers there are great and their programs are amazing and I feel like my teacher has taught me a lot. Filling the skills gap will ensure a strong future for our country. And Oklahoma Career Tech's Nathan Brubaker says technical skills are only part of the overall equation. Soft skills are, are really what makes a, a well-rounded person. You can't just have the physical skills. They need all those skills together to be really productive. We need them skilled because there is a gap in just people that know how to do things. You know, whether it's the build, design, or whatever. You need people to do not only that, but can communicate with their employers, but also to communicate with each other. And it's communication that helps students like Don connect with other competitors. I learn a lot about the industry. I see how other people, how much they know. And for Don, Skills USA keeps him up to date on the industry's new and emerging trends. It's constantly uh, advancing. The technology is constantly growing. And it's nice to see like new things show up, like fiber. We're doing fiber here. And Bushman says those skills will help students earn a spot in the growing number of technical careers. There's a lot of opportunity out there. Job opportunities are open everywhere. Helping students prepare for careers while bridging together a growing skills gap. Now it's estimated that 10 million new skilled workers will be needed by the year 2020. Today, 83% of companies report a moderate to serious shortage of skilled workers. And the majority of those positions require a career and technical education background. And I think it's important to note that the Skills USA organization has a very close relationship with both business and industry. They do, Rob. The Skills USA organization has an active relationship with more than 600 companies across the nation, as well as business and labor unions nationwide as well. All right, thanks so much, Andy. You're welcome, Rob. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, high fashion thanks to some cow couture but first to protect and to serve well law enforcement is one of the more popular events in the skills usa competition and an area that several tech centers in oklahoma have programs in 
And our J.D. Roseman is here to take us for a visit. Well, when it comes to your property and well-being, everyone feels a little safer when there's a security guard nearby. MetroTech in Oklahoma City offers a security training course that trains guards for every situation. Ready, aim, fire. In the MetroTech security training program, students learn the essentials for becoming a security officer. James Guerrero is the adult instructional coordinator. I think it's important because a lot of times a lot of our students are looking for other opportunities, new jobs, new uh, areas that they want to get into and succeed in. And this program is one of those that really helps adult students find other areas of work or younger students that are really looking for a, a path to get into, a career to get into. Uh, it gives them a good spot to get their feet wet and uh, a lot of good experience. Good experience, taught by some of the best in the biz. Roy Foreman has been a firearms instructor since 1968. Well, if somebody's going to carry a firearm, I think that they should know how to use it, when to shoot, when not to shoot, how to avoid getting themselves hurt as well as uh, hurting an innocent bystander. And we do the same, same type of training here as police departments get. Police departments get more and more involved, but it's the same type training, same type of uh, mindset. And an entryway for careers in the field of security. They can usually find a job with security guard place. They can, some, some of our students go to work for armored car people, school protection, this sort of stuff. A lot of people uh, leave here and go to work for a bank. And student Demetrius says that it all starts by being comfortable with a firearm. Basically that you don't try to muscle the weapon, you, you kind of keep your breathing and everything normal, um, watch your trigger squeeze, you um, maintain good sight pick, front, front sight picture, um, and it'll, it'll do what it's supposed to do. A start in a program that Guerrero says goes beyond the basics. On the biz side, it's a lot of training in uh, specific areas, um, areas of their needs. So if they need computer training or, or lean or, or uh, a specific type training, we can customize that for businesses and get their employees uh, trained in those areas so they can excel and succeed and help the business grow. Meeting the security needs of businesses, but first and foremost, teaching safety. Because speed do doesn't mean anything unless you're accurate. And of course, accuracy is nothing unless you're safe. Perfect, 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 perfect. Now Foreman also says that TV gives people the wrong idea, portraying gun safety poorly, which is something he's always correcting in class. So JD, can students specialize in certain areas of security? Well, yes they can, Rob. Students can complete many certifications such as unarmed security guard, CPR, and telecommunications, along with others that make them much more desirable for future employers. All right, sounds like a great opportunity. Thank you so much, JD. You're welcome, Rob. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, it is Mother's Day week, and in the off chance you didn't give or receive your heart's desire, we do have a suggestion. Here's our Lisa Hines. For a woman, the biggest fashion accessory she can have is a purse, and finding just the right one isn't easy. I've spent months looking for the one. Now you can have a one-of-a-kind purse made just for you at Holy Cow Couture. With a snip here, a tap there, a stitch across, turn it inside out, and holy cow, it's a purse. Brittany Pillars is the owner of Holy Cow Couture and says it all began kind of by accident. I started Holy Cow Couture about seven or eight years ago, and it was basically just design inspiration. I was headed to a rodeo and took a cowhide off my floor. I cut it up and sewed it up very randomly and I ended up going and a lot of people stopped me and really liked the bag. So 
I got some orders and some friends and just kind of followed through and basically started it from there. A product that is definitely one of a kind. I personally hand select each of the materials to go for the bags. That helps me with the design process to keep all of the bags looking the same and with the same inspiration. I pick out quality cow heights. Um, I use a bunch of different distributors throughout the U.S. and handpick each individual hide. From there, I find a piece of leather, whether it's crock or embossed, hand embossed leather, to help people kind of get the design going for their custom brands or fringe or things like that. Sort of a down-home couture that makes Britney's purses so special. I wanted to have a company that people could relate to, that they could go, here's a bag that I can afford, that I'll spend a little bit more money on than I normally do. It's going to be something that's a quality product, it's going to last you for years to come, and you'll have your own personal brand or design on there. Creating a popularity that's turning Brittany's home-based business into a full-fledged startup at Meridian Technology Center's Business Incubator. Seven or eight years ago, it was just a hobby for me that made great money, but then I really took it seriously once I got married, moved from California here to Oklahoma, and Meridian Technology has basically just enveloped me and helped start the business back from the foundation so that everything is a better place so that business can become its own entity. Ron Duggins is the business development coordinator at Meridian and says Holy Cow Couture is not like other businesses housed there. A uh, business incubator, and specifically the one here at Meridian Technology Center, is a program set up to assist people in starting a new business or helping them with an existing small business. So for the companies that live in our building, they rent space from us. Most of them are new businesses, really young. Some of them have just started, and we work with them in order for them to get their business off the ground. Holy Cow Couture is kind of a different business than sometimes we see because we are in Stillwater with the university, we have some technology companies that we work with. They're a little different because they're an actual manufacturer, and they're also making uh, a, a product that we don't normally see in our incubator. And we've actually been able to help her by, first of all, providing space. So she got to move out of her house and put her production facility here. And also we've helped her on adding employees and kind of figuring out how to go from a home-based business to a really strong expanding business and they're seeing their sales increase greatly. And for Brittany, being in the incubator is good for business. Surprisingly, yes. A lot of people don't know that we're here. Our main following of people and our co customer clientele is off of social media. So for people to see us here in person, they, they're pretty surprised and excited. Uh, we do get a lot of people coming in and wanting to create something of their own um, and get to meet face to face and see the products. The social media has basically been 90% of what we do with as much time that we have since there are very few of us working here and it is handmade, hands-on, 100% of the time. There isn't much time left to go out into the public, but being here in town and being in person is really able to help us get out there a little bit more. The social media aspect is something that we're able to reach a lot of people very quickly. A lot of people that want to see the photos, the images, the new products that we have up, we're able to instantly post it and it goes to all their friends. So it's kind of a spider web of people. And for anyone from a ranching background, Brittany's bags come with their own ear tag straight from the herd. It's kind of a play on what we do, uh, but I also found it a very, very unique way to label our bags. You know, it's not just another shiny item that people recognize by a name. Our bags speak for themselves. They'll see a bright white ear tag that has a number on the front and our information on the back. And so a lot of people recognize our bags by that unique cattle ear tag that we have. Unique labels, unique bags for that unique lady. Now Brittany wants to make sure that all her leather is used, so she also makes jewelry out of the leftovers that is just as unique as her purses. Now if you'd like to see more about how small town businesses can go big time thanks to social media, we do have a story with a small town online expert streaming on our website at okhorizon.com. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Just head to okhorizon.com where you can see more of any of our stories, read our reporters behind the scenes blogs, see what others are saying about us on Twitter, and face the facts with our regular updates. So reach out and touch us anywhere and anytime. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, 
We'll look at concerns over an outbreak that threatens Oklahoma's poultry industry. We're in a real uh, tight margin business anyway, and so uh, we'd have to have a good conversation with our banker if that were to occur. And we'll <laughs> meet a young lady paying her way through college one snip at a time. On Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Finally today, one of the distinct pleasures of my job is being able to visit with young people making something of themselves. This past week, I was able to help award scholarships to some of Metro Tech's very best students, young people who are going to be the very ones that fill the skills gap we talk so much about. And here's why. Four out of every five companies report a moderate to serious shortage of skilled workers with the most difficult positions to fill, those requiring the very skills that Metro Tech teaches on a daily basis, which is good for the students and good for our economy. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week.